<laughs> Personally, I think it's about the ethos of the brewery and the brewers that are, that are involved in it. Straight away when they're tasting a beer, so all those lovely aromas, the bitterness in the beer, all of that kind of stuff is, is straight from the hops. And you maybe notice the yeast flavors and the malt flavors afterwards, but hops are the big change point and they're probably the biggest thing that have brought beer and craft beer in general to the public's attention. English hops would have been used in English bitters for those peppery, fresh grass aromas. Continental lager, something like that. You're looking at the noble hops that come from the Halletau regions in Germany, Tetnanger, the Sarts regions in Czech Republic, and then across Slovenia and places like that. Sierra Nevada, Dogfish Head, Anchor Bruin, things. They're the ones that have started using those big, punchy American hops. You get those piney, grapefruit, citrus, orange zest aromas. And that's really what lends itself well to those American pale ales and IPAs that just give you such a punch in the face with hops when you get them. I think the big hops that are creating a bit more of a stir these days are Australian and New Zealand hops, which have a lot of those big punchy grapefruit characters of the American hops that are actually less harsh on the bitterness. And also you get some more of those tropical fruit flavors, the mango, the passion fruit, pineapple and that kind of thing. The issue we will have now with Australia and New Zealand is that they just cannot cope with the demand from the rest of the world to supply the hops. So they will keep them to themselves and we have to try and find those hops somewhere else. <laughs>